Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, this is a video that a lot of you have been waiting for and it's here. It, the time has come. This video, I've been back and forth with whether or not I wanted to do this video because, you know, we filmed this show so long ago that I just like genuinely don't care about any of those things or any of the issues or anything anymore um but of course the fans get so invested into these relationships and friendships that I've been getting so many questions so many messages so I figured you know why not basically answer to everyone's questions and tell everybody what they you know have been waiting to hear all in one shot um so that's pretty much what this video is for me because we didn't get a reunion for X on the Beach. Of course, there's always two sides to everyone's story. Um, that's fine. But there are a lot of parts of my story that aren't portrayed correctly. And it's unfortunate that, you know, that happens. Let me make one thing clear. Is that I knew when I signed those contracts um, to do the show that I was signing pretty much my life away for them to edit and portray me however they want, whichever way they want. Um, so I'm well aware of that. Um, I am somebody who is very like true to myself at all times. And even in knowing that, you know, they could edit things a certain way, I was a little more naive being that it was my first show and I'm like, well, as long as I'm myself, then nothing can go wrong, right? Just be yourself. No. <laughs> and with all of this all being said, um, I'm super thankful for the opportunity to have been on MTV's X on the Beach, especially like the debut season. It The opportunity has been unbelievable. Um, I'm very thankful to have been, to have been given it. Um, it was so much fun. I loved every second of it. So let's get straight to it. This is part one and it's gonna be good. So here's the whole story of Louie and I dating. Here's our relationship story and, and that'll explain a lot about, you know, to do with the show. My freshman year, you know, I got to college and was pretty much dating somebody like instantly, right away. Um, that ended like horribly. Um, after a few months and all that then my sophomore year I started dating somebody new instantly uh, pretty much right away that also ended horribly like most relationships do um, and then my senior year which is technically would have been my junior year because it was my third year of school um, but I was graduating that year came around and I was like listen this is my last year um, in college and I, you know, I went through it already freshman year, sophomore year, like being tied down to somebody and it not working out, you know, not having fun, like doing anything with any other guys, um, getting to know other guys because I was so like, you know, just into the one. And so my senior year came around and there was one kid that I had hooked up with just one time and then... It was my second semester and Louis and I, you know, we kind of met, we started talking and hanging out and, you know, it was never that serious. It was never anything uh, more than just like hanging out and talking. Um, we weren't even hooking up like that. We weren't even like having sex like that at all. Um, and so Louis never you know told me he liked me louie never told me he wanted to be with me louie never asked me to be his girlfriend um and so in like a week of us talking is when i had hooked up with um the person that i had hooked up with already that's that year um right away so that's why in in the video you know i'm like oh i hooked up with somebody and then i told louie like yeah, I hooked up with someone immediately, basically, because I did. It was literally like a week of us talking. And so um, throughout the time of me and Louie, you know, 
know, talking and hanging out was literally just, just that. Talking, hanging out. And by hanging out, I mean, like, this kid would come to my dorm room with his laptop and HDMI cord, plug it into my TV, and we'd watch some bootleg illegal movies online, and that was it. So we went to a very small school, and there was a lot of, like, he said, she said, back and forth type of, you know, everybody knows everybody, everybody's in each other's business situation. Um, and so... You know, during the time of us talking and hanging out, there were a lot of people who, you know, we were both friends with that be like to me, you know, don't expect anything out of this. Like, you know, he just had a girlfriend for a long time and um, he's not the relationship type right now. He's not looking for anything serious. So I was like, oh, perfect, because same. And so I would tell him, you know, and whenever we would talk and say like, like, what all these people are saying back and forth to us we would be like why does anybody care if we're both cool with the fact that we're just chilling that it's not that serious and i said to him to his face multiple times like you know you're not my boyfriend i'm not your girlfriend like we're just chilling it ain't that serious and he agreed he knew he never once like sat me down i was like listen i don't like that you're saying this isn't serious because I like you. No, there's absolutely fucking none of that. So in this edit of the show, they make it look like I'm saying I was entertaining other guys by like I was having sex with them. No. Um, the one guy that I hooked up with in the beginning, like right as soon as Louie and I were talking, that was that. And then throughout the time being, I was pretty much just like flirting with guys at the bar, hanging out with guys at the bar. Like I said, Louie played baseball, so he would was not around a lot on the weekends. And so if I'm going to the bar as a single woman, I'm gonna get my free drinks, I'm gonna flirt with who I gotta flirt with, um, exchange numbers with who I wanna exchange numbers with and dance with who I wanna dance with. And that's what I meant by I was entertaining other guys because that's what I was doing, I was entertaining other guys. I wasn't actually like hooking up with other people during the whole time period. Let's keep in mind that this was over a span of an entire semester. Um, so the second kid that I hooked up with when I said, oh, there were two guys, was literally at the end of the semester, <laughs> like all the way at the end. Um, so the people on Twitter and, and whatever that wanna be like, oh, Vic gets around, she's a hoe. And I'm like, first of all, listen, I don't slut shame anybody. I don't care if you're a hoe. It's not my body, not my problem not my concern um but I'm someone who's never been like that actually and so it's funny to see people you know call me a hoe and this and that for like hooking up with two guys pretty much four or five months apart from each other talking to somebody in, in the middle who I wasn't even hooking up with like that people that we went to school with literally text me laughing watching um the show because they're like is this kid really saying like you cheated on him as if he was your boyfriend? And I'm like, thank you, that's exactly it. And other people that we went to school with, I either get that response or other people that we went to school with are like, when were you and Louie dating? And I'm like, yeah, you went there and you didn't even know that. I had no idea where his head was at, what he was feeling toward me. Um, and that's why I was so comfortable entertaining other guys because I'm like, if I had a boyfriend, this would be different. I would be secure in a relationship. But it's it's always, this is the thing. This is why, why girls can't win. Because when you like the guy and you express that you like the guy and you're trying to make moves and you're open and you're like, why aren't we establishing anything and this and that, you're fucking crazy. You're considered to be clingy. You're considered to be annoying. Um, and then when you're not like that, now it's like, oh, you're a cheater, you're a liar, you're an asshole. No, you didn't ask me to be your girlfriend and I'm not gonna be that clingy girl that asks you for the title. So I'm just gonna do me and you're just gonna do you. And, and I never told him about those people because I didn't owe him that. The reason why when Louis showed up on the beach and asked me in 0.5 seconds that I didn't really get into it is because I'm like, the kid just fucking got here and 
it's already like a pressured conversation to be like okay so when we were talking did you happen to hook up with somebody else like hi welcome to hawaii like um and louie and i were friends honestly leading up to the show we didn't know that it was x on the beach we i never even heard of x on the beach before we didn't know any anything that this was going to be but we knew something was up um when you know after he was interviewed along with the rest of my exes that he kept getting you know more more in depth um so we were talking all the time what they didn't show between us is that we had several serious like sit down talk conversations um they didn't show any of it they made it look like louie and i did not speak when we were in the house um and we did multiple times were we hanging out in the house all the time no absolutely not but we had plenty of talks every single day that he was there because he was only there for a few days we had a conversation like a long conversation it was also his birthday while we were there and i made him two cakes i made him a vanilla cake and i made him a chocolate cake and the whole house ate it and we sang him happy birthday um and no one told me to do that i went straight up to production and i was like um, it's his birthday, so I want to make him feel special. He's not home. He doesn't have a cell phone to talk to any of his friends. He's here around strangers. Like, like I want to make him cakes, you know? They didn't show any of that. They didn't show any of the conversations that he and I had together. And including the fights that we had. Because I was arguing with him because I'm like, how are you going to come up in here and call me this cheater and liar and make me look like such a shitty person when you know I was never your girlfriend? When you know that you were never my boyfriend for me to even be loyal to. I was under the impression that he was coming into the house as my friend and that we were we were going to be friends and it was going to be cool. I was I was literally telling the girls in the house before he even got there. Like my ex is super cute. Um I don't know if he's any of your type, but when he gets here, feel free to go get to know him, make your move. Everybody was like, "Okay, like cool I will when he got there ended up nobody was interested in him which is fine um but I was even saying to them when he got there you know before I knew he was like talking all this shit I'm like if, if you think he's cute please go ahead like I don't want anybody to think there's gonna be drama with me over him because I don't care um and unfortunately all the girls who are, are just so happen to be nice to him now are like ew no he is not my type he is not cute I can't believe you even dated him oh my god no you know everybody had something to say oh no 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 i'm not interested in him i'm not interested in him and that's why when jasmine had you know cut him sent him home or whatever i said to her no one's upset with you like we understand because like me and him were going absolutely nowhere we were either arguing or having the same conversation again clarifying everything none of the girls were interested in him he didn't seem to be really interested in any of the girls either um, whether he was or wasn't, I don't know. But from what I witnessed, he wasn't trying to talk to anybody. Um, and we have a show here to film. And that, that night, they they make it look like in the episode, you know, they have the, the narrator like, uh, Victoria, could you at least pretend that you care or feel bad? And I'm like, really? You guys are really going to do that when I'm the only person who went upstairs with him when he got eliminated? I'm the only person who went upstairs with him and talk to him and you know he w he got cut so obviously he wasn't in a good mood he, we weren't having this whole jolly conversation but it was kind of just like a it's all good like we'll be fine after the show while he was packing his stuff and stood there for a little bit until it was like all right let me go back down and because he was finishing up packing clearly didn't want me to be around um and then yeah it was after that is when chase was like all right well do you want to say anything to him and i was like no because I already did. I already spoke to him. I already had the conversation with him. Um, and there was no need to have another. I said goodbye. And that was that. They clearly had the image that they wanted of me. Which is like to be mean. And I'm not a mean person. Um, just because I'm an independent bitch who does what I want. And if you're not my boyfriend, I'm not sorry for entertaining other guys. Doesn't make me a mean person. So... After all that, no, Louie and I do not speak anymore. We are in no contact whatsoever. We have not talked once since the show has ended. And we will never talk again. <laughs> and I'm still waiting on my fruit basket that he should be sending me to thank me for getting him on MTV. You're welcome. 
Um, you're welcome for introducing you to some cool people that you now have made friends. Uh, without me, you would have never been given this opportunity in your life. So just don't forget that and you're welcome. So I want to piggyback off of the situation where I just had said like they already had, you know, the image that they wanted for me, which to be, which was to be a mean girl. So the whole thing with Jasmine, the whole uh, wearing the same outfit. Here's here's the actual situation that happened. Um, what Taylor was saying when she says, "I think it was Jasmine." And then it goes into she came back in the same dress type of situation, whatever she said, same white dress. We were not talking about Jasmine. What Taylor was saying is that it was, I think it was Jasmine who pointed it out to me and Victoria that Alicia was wearing the same white dress again, that same white lace dress that Alicia wore constantly. And people were saying it in the house and it was Jasmine who said it to me and Taylor and we were dying laughing because it was true. It wasn't even that serious. It's girls shit talking. Every person in that house was shit talking everybody. So you're not gonna make three people look like the mean girls when everybody was equally talking shit. Jasmine being the one who pointed it out that Alicia was wearing the dress. They literally clip, like cut the clip to Jasmine wearing uh like a floral top and shorts. Meanwhile, Taylor literally says, same white dress. And then you see Alicia in her interview that Corey bombarded in the same white dress that she had been wearing multiple times and that we, we were talking about because we noticed. Jasmine pointed it out. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, I guess you're one of us. And don't forget, on Wednesdays we wear pink. And yeah. And I'm friends with Chanley. And... You know, she could, she could have said whatever she said. Uh, you know, she was new in the house. Um, but being that I'm friends with Shanley, she shit talks people too. She shit talks everyone in the cast. Like, everybody does. We all do. So it doesn't make anyone any more or less mean than the other. We all do it. I mean, they don't show the fact that, you know, Faith was making fun of Chelsko and Chelsko ran downstairs to, you know, like, call her out. We were all standing, sitting in front of Faith while she was making fun of something that Chelsko was saying or doing or whatever. And Chelsko ran downstairs pretty much, like, crying and called her out. And they don't show that Jasmine got in her face, screaming in her face, like, the, to the point where, like, I think it was Faith or maybe Angela. Somebody was, like, literally holding Jasmine back because they are like, chill, girl, why are you screaming at her in this girl's poor girl's face who did literally nothing to you they don't show the fact that jasmine literally fought with lexi every single day she would call her a waste of life a waste of space um she would call her annoying she was always talking shit about her um they didn't show any of that like again so i'm like i just i don't understand like you know I guess when you do these shows, they already know what they have planned for you. They already know who they want you to be, what you want you to look like. So, you know, Jasmine screaming at Chelsko's face, Jasmine screaming at Lexi every day um, doesn't fit into her, her character, her storyline. So they didn't use it. I mean, it was kind of irrelevant stuff anyway because it didn't really like need to be put into any of these stories, but it happened. I'm like, okay, cool, like, I don't feel, Jasmine wanted to t make her comment on Twitter about, you know, how she, maybe she was offended or whatever about the comment. I'm like, I don't feel bad because, like, you were worse to uh, other people. I didn't even get mad at Jasmine over two times that she told Skylar that she's prettier than me. And it's like, how are you gonna make it like, I'm, some people are mean girls, and then the, the other people who are constantly caught doing mean shit doesn't get aired. Like when Skylar had gotten to the house the first time, Jasmine, who was already my friend in the house, already went and told Skylar, um, so, oh, you're prettier than her type of situation. Um, and I confronted her about it and she denied saying that. Um, I confronted Jasmine and she denied saying it. She's like, I didn't say that. I wouldn't say that. That's so mean, which it is. And then a second time that she had said it, made it to the TV where 
it's when Skylar and I had like that whole argument. She's like, oh, she's just intimidated by, by you because you're so hot and um, whatever. But then 10 minutes later, when I'm upstairs talking to her, to Jasmine, she's calling Skylar crazy. So like, you know, like, and that, that time around, I didn't even know that Jasmine said anything to Skylar, like, oh, you're just so hot and intimidating. Because we had already crossed that bridge, and she already denied it and said, that's so mean, I would never say something like that. Well, thank you, editing, for letting me know that she did say it yet again, which validates that she said it the first time. And, and then, like, other things that happened in the house that they also didn't show is, like, Faith and Jasmine had gotten into a fight. Um, and so, basically... After their fight, um, Jasmine went, like, straight to Angela and basically, like, apologized to her for, like, not speaking with her in the house, really, and, like, kind of judging her and whatnot, because she was like, oh, Faith was always telling me not to, not to be friends with you, not to be nice to you, not to, you know, hang out with you, and all this stuff. And so it's like, okay, so clearly Faith was talking shit, too. They didn't show faith and jasmine's fight i think it was like the night about june that whole situation um i wasn't even involved in it so i don't even know i didn't cut june because i told faith i wouldn't and i was her friend so i didn't um faith and i were close in the house and even friends after the show we actually had talked about getting an apartment in la together and even though her and angela were not friends um that didn't mean that I still couldn't be friends with her. And this is something else that I wanted to talk on, being that I've seen some people here and there be like, oh, Victoria um, is just Angela's follower. That couldn't be m further from the truth. Like, if I was Angela's follower, I wouldn't be friends with the people that she does not get along with. I wouldn't be friends with Faith. I was friends with Faith regardless of what went on between her and Angela and the try situation if I felt like if I felt like she was a bad person and what she did to Angela was so unacceptable and disgusting would I be friends with her no but I didn't I didn't feel that way and it was just stupid reality TV drama I could be friends with people that don't get along without ever having to speak each other's name to each other um, and that's how it was Angela really never ever talked about Faith to me um, and Faith really never talks about Angela to me ever um, and it was always fine and then it was only up until maybe two months ago where Angela ended up telling me that her and Faith you know that they had talked and Faith uh, made it a point to tell her that I was actually a really shitty friend to Angela and that I'm the plug and that I tell Faith everything that goes on with Angela and Tarai and that I, this one is my favorite. Um, so there was one, one time where Angela was like super busy for like two or three days and we didn't talk. I had like called her a few times, she didn't even pick up the phone. So I put on my snap story, it was like a photo of Angela and I was like, um, missing like like warning my my best friend Angela must have been kidnapped because she hasn't picked up the phone in two days and so oddly enough Faith messaged to my story knowing that they're not friends with each other um she messaged to my story and was like LMAO what happened so I was like um oh this bitch hasn't answered my text in two or three days and so she was like LMAO ha 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 where is she so I didn't answer that message because one, clearly I don't know where the fuck she is. I haven't talked to her. And two, you guys are not friends. So even if I knew where she was, I would not tell you that information. That's just weird. And so Faith told that to Angela saying, you know, I posted the story and she messaged me and I started shit talking her to Faith saying that she's a bitch and that she's fake uh, for not answering my calls. And then that I stopped answering her message messages because I caught myself talking shit. And I, and I didn't want Faith to expose me for talking shit about Angela. I'm like, no, I literally, yeah, I said this bitch. That's how I talk to you. Like, I don't care. 
Um, I would never in a million years shit talk my best friend and especially not to somebody who does not like her. And there were so many more stories that Angela told me and I was like, like my mind is blown. I was like, I have all, I, I let, literally sent a video to Angela of every single text message Faith and I have ever exchanged. Every text from the day I got her number to the last time we ever spoke. I mean, I keep all my receipts. I know where they all are, so I have all the proof. I'm not sure where Faith's receipts are, but then again, she doesn't really pay for anything, so she doesn't have any receipts. The only time that um, she and I had really talked about anybody was her telling me that she doesn't actually have beef with anybody, but she does this shit to get on another show. And, you know, whatever, do what you gotta do. You, everyone has their own motives. And everybody has their own goals. My goal is not to get on another show over rivalries. Hers is. That's fine. I don't care. What, if that's how you make your money, if that's what you want to do, more power to you, do it. And, you know, she's the first one to say, uh, oh, don't ever be offended by anything that I say on Twitter. It's all for beef, you know, for the TV. I know how to, you know, I'm not a rookie. I know how this works. And so... Angela and her had like some Twitter fight after the fact that she and I were already not friends and um, I liked Angela's tweets. Next thing you know, I'm blocked on Faith's Instagram, Faith's Twitter. So I'm like, I thought we weren't supposed to be offended here, but you could dish it, but you can't take it. I don't, I don't know. I didn't even tweet about her or say anything about her. I don't, I don't care. I just don't find it to be worth it. I'm like, all right, well, another one bites of dust. Another person that I can't trust. Um, shame to find out after like six months of us already being friends and it's not like I was the only one that Faith was such a shitty friend to um, it wasn't until after I found out about the things that she was saying about me that I also found out I mean she's friends with Lexi she tried sleeping with Polly um, she's friends with Jasmine and tries to say that Jasmine steals you know interviews and the spotlight from her and that Without Faith, Jasmine can't get booked. Um, I'm pretty sure that Jasmine was on a much bigger show and a lot more relevant. So I'm pretty sure she doesn't need Faith to get booked. I don't know why she would convince herself of that. But yeah, I mean, she just, she just goes against anybody. She doesn't really care. So, okay. So, so I guess next um, that people ask me often about, um, aside from what happened between me and Faith, is what happened between me and Lexi. Um, Lexi and I were really close in the house, um, and I started to notice some things pretty quickly with Lexi, but I kind of was just putting them, like, to the side because I like to give everybody the benefit of the doubt, and I had only known the girl for a month, literally. Um, and so it was kind of like, you know, after the show, the only time that I would actually have a conversation with her or really hear from her is when her and Polly were like fighting and when they were doing well when they were doing good um that no, nothing like I it would be we would go days without talking because they're good again and then she would like call me up at two in the morning to be like oh my god Polly you know whatever the case is he's cheating on me again and all this stuff and um you know, I was there for her because that's what I do for my friends. But it was these little things that I was realizing, like, you know, I don't even think this girl considers me as a friend, really, or just somebody to call when she's upset. And I don't play that game. I know what a real friend is. I know what friendship means. Um, and I value friendship more than anything in this world. Um, and so when I feel like you don't value me, I cut you off. Same thing I did with Faith is what happened with me and Lexi. Um, it's not as juicy as what people probably think it is because it's nothing like that. And so it was, um, New Year's, um, I don't need to get into details about her and Polly's situation, um, but she was coming to New York to spend New Year's, she was coming to, to Polly to spend New Year's with all of us here on the East Coast and she was going to stay with him. That was fine. They had broken up after her flight was already booked and everything. And now again, this is another like 2 a.m. call. Um, me and Polly broke up again. Can I stay with you when I come to New York? Um, so I said, yeah, of course you can. Like, 
and then it was getting closer and closer and we were you know talking about it and everything and then I guess her and Polly had made up then like the night that she got here or the night after she got here um I see that she's going out with or went out with like it's Polly, Lexi, Derek, Louie and and somebody else maybe Charles I don't know I know that it was the four of them Polly, Lexi, Derek and Louie and I'm like really I'm like this girl who's my friend who I am who was like asking to stay with me is now going out with my ex who she knows the situation um she doesn't talk to him they have no relationship whatsoever they're not friends um and she's not even like inviting me or telling me I'm like that's just fucking weird so when I texted her and I'm like what the fuck like cool you don't even tell me that you're here and going out when I was planning on like being with you and you're out with my ex now like and she told me um she had no idea he was gonna be there like I'm not like that you know I'm not like that you know I would have told you um like I don't want you to feel like you were left out I honestly had no idea until we got here we got here and Paul was like do you care if Louie comes and yada 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 so I'm like whatever save it fine okay and then I was with um Corey the next day and he straight up told me he was like oh yeah they went out with Louie and them last night right like Lexi texted me inviting me asking me if I wanted to go and told me that he was gonna be there I was like like what like okay um and and that she was asking Corey if Louie can come spend New Year's Eve with us because we were all gonna be together for New Year's Eve uh not Louie everybody else and that she was telling me no that, that she didn't even know he was involved in anything but she was the one texting Corey like oh can Louie come and this and that so I'm like <laughs> what the fuck like I wouldn't even care if you would just tell me like it's worse that you're trying to like lie about it but I'm like we're, we're all talking to the same people of course I'm finding out so it's just weird so I was already like turned off to her and then um, that same night I think it was is when everything blew up about her and Polly I'm sure she's gonna go on live and tell their story so you could hear from her her and Polly had a whole big thing and now this is after you know I hadn't even been hearing from her she had been lying about the whole thing with Louie and then she called me up and was hysterical crying about her and Polly and was like could I come stay with you at your house and I was already in the city now with Corey and Taylor I was like girl like that ship has sailed like you could have been staying with me at my house like you wanted to give this 10th time the charm like I don't I can't help you now like no I'm sorry um and it was just like no I'm not I'm not gonna let you call me up when it's convenient for you you know when you are literally like acting like treating me like I'm a fucking idiot I'm seeing all the signs like I'm seeing through all of it and I'm just not like that like that's not the type of friend that I am and I don't appreciate that type of friend we really didn't talk again so there was a few conversations that night because of like her and she was telling me what happened between her and Polly but then after that I just deaded her like I didn't feel the need to continue talking to her she wants to go on after buzz and be like oh Victoria is just Angela's lap dog and that's why she doesn't talk to me no because Angela didn't even know that I didn't not talk to Lexi anymore until weeks after I didn't talk to Lexi anymore um I never I'm not somebody who needs people to hop on my bandwagon I'm not somebody who needs people to dead people for me I didn't fuck with her anymore and that's my own business that's no one else's business and Angela stopped being friends with her for her own reasons um, after weeks after Th there were things I even had noticed about Lexi like you know when with Skylar I'm like Lexi okay here's the thing Lexi is a people pleaser. She knows that she is. She says it about herself. You know, she's like an ass kisser. She likes to have approval from everybody. She likes to be friends with everybody. Um, it's always, oh, I love you. I love this one. I love that one. Bestie, best friend, this and that, whatever. I don't throw around the word love and best friend like it's fucking candy. Um, but 
she in the house she didn't even like fuck with Skylar like that they were friends right away because they were the first two girl exes together um and they were friends and then you know they didn't show it as much but as the days were going on you know and the whole like Skylar was getting drunk all the time type of situation Lexi was like embarrassed to even be associated with her and the day of the um elimination where Skylar got cut I thought it was going we all thought that it was going to be a tie between Skylar and Derek and Lexi was the first one you know hyping me up in my ear like oh I got your back I'm cutting Skylar if it comes down to a tie and the exes have the power uh tr trust me I will cut her I have no problem with it um no one wants her in this house she's annoying everybody she's sloppy she's messy and even when you know all the exes came back uh, there was it was like that night me Polly and Lexi were all laying upstairs in bed together and she was like because there's like a few fights that happened around. she's like oh this is why no one wanted her here she's so embarrassing um you know we were talking about her yada 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 like she was one of the people who made sure that Polly cut Skylar but you know she wants to be on Instagram and or I mean not Instagram Twitter that they're best friends and I'm like okay sure whatever I don't I just don't I don't understand that mentality of like you know just telling people what they want to hear and like in the moment of if I'm with you I'm on your side and if I'm with you on on your side and that's the type of like girl that she is but that's just why I don't talk to Lexi <laughs> thank you guys for watching part one of what would have been on the reunion from me don't forget that there is a part two so if you got the time Link below, go check that out.